Hello teachers and students, thank you for being with us today. So today we are going to look at the SPM English Language Paper 2, which is writing. We are going to share with you some format of the questions and also some answering techniques. So before I start, let me introduce myself. I'm Chong and I'm currently teaching in SMK Sri Matang. So I'll be sharing about part 1 and part 2. And Madam Adeline will be with me to, from SMK Sungai Mau, who will be talking about the part Part three. Alright, first let's start. First of all, let's look at the overview of the writing task. So first of all, we all know already, for the writing task, we have three parts. The first part is a short communicative message where you are required to write an email of 80 words. It is informal writing and CFR A2 level. So the questions will look something like this. It carries 20 marks and for part two, it is guided writing and is an informal and a formal essay of 125 to 150 words CFR B1 level so the question this is the questions and also it carries uh, 20 marks okay the last part which is part 3 we have the extended writing task you have three questions you have to pick one to answer you need to write 200 to 250 words CFR B2 level so we have four different formats for this part. First, we have the article. Then we have a story, which is narrative writing. We have report and also a review. So those are the three parts you need to answer for SPM writing tasks. Okay, as you can see, for part one, it is A2 level, part two, it is B1 and part 3 it is B2 means for part 1 it is less street as for part 3 it will be streeter in terms of marking and you are expected to perform better for part 3 okay so let's go to part 1 which is the part where you are required to write an email so what how I'm going to share with you is we are going to first look at the assessment scale for part 1 what are the criteria if we want to get a band 5 in our writing? And then we'll look at the task requirement, means we are going to have look at the question, and we analyze the question, unpack the question, and identify what is actually required to fulfill the task. Number three, we are going to compare two scripts to see what are the differences between a good piece of writing and a weak piece of writing, and how do we improve in our writing so that we can achieve a higher band. And for number four, some other useful tips. All right, let's start. So this is the part one assessment scale, which we are going to look at the, you are, which you are accessed according to the content, the communicative achievement, language, and also organization. So for content, we are going to look at the task fulfillment, means how fully the question is answered and how relevant is your answer to the questions. Right, which carries the five marks. Communicative achievement, the appropriateness on how clear the idea is being explained in your, answer, in your response. And it focuses on the register and also the style of writing. For language, we are going to look at the effective use of grammar and vocabulary in writing. As for organization, we're going to look at the structure of the writing, your paragraphing, how, co how coherent your idea is, and also the use of cohesive devices, connectors, and punctu punctuation marks in your essay. So all of this carries five marks. So all together, it's a 20 mark. Okay, so how do we get a band five in part one writing, which achieve an A2 level. First, for content, we need to make sure that all the contents are relevant relevant, and the target reader is fully informed. As for communicative achievement, the keyword there is straightforward ideas and you need to use the convention of the communicative task reasonably appropriately. So the convention here is email. So email, usually we write it to our friends, so it will be like in an, a friendly tone. Organization, we need to use simple connectors and also a limited number of cohesive devices appropriately. For language, we have to use the basic, basic vocabulary 
and also some simple grammatical forms which is which has a good degree of control and even though the errors are noticeable but meaning can still be determined so these are the parts that we are going to look at and also to achieve a band 5 all right so now let's look at the sample questions that we have here so we have to analyze and unpack the question and see how do we fulfill the requirement of the task so question one we have here you receive an email from your neighbor raj who wants your opinion on something hi i've decided to join a talent competition but i can't decide what to perform what performance do you think i should choose why do you think it's suitable for me what can i learn from joining this competition i hope to hear from you soon bye so we need to write an email to a friend uh, about of about 80 words so there's a checklist there so when you have a questions like this the first thing what you need to do is you read the question properly and try to understand the questions all right after we understand the questions we will highlight the keywords for example you know that your recipient is raj okay because you're replying to his email and what is the essay about what is the task about you need to express your opinion give some suggestions for raj and it is about a talent competition that raj is going to join okay so tick means we read and understand the questions already now we already highlight the keywords highlighted the keywords and the next part that we are going to look at is we have to identify the three tasks that is stated in these questions so the first one okay the first question what performance do you think i should choose so you need to suggest one a type of performance to raj for her to for him to perform in this talent competition all right let's label it c1 that is our first point and why do you think it's suitable for me that one will be our c2 which is our second content point that we need to answer state the reason why you suggest that particular performance right and then the last one what can i learn from joining this competition let's label it c2 which is um after you suggested that performance if Raj joined that performance, so what is it that he can learn from it? Okay, so all together, there are three tasks that we identify in these questions. C1, C2, and C3. So, that is how we unpack and analyze the questions. Okay, so when we write our informal email, so it will look like this, where you have uh, our subject, the greeting, the paragraphing, and signing her off. Okay, a template of an email which looks like this, which can be found actually in your textbook okay so now we are going to move to the part that we compare two different scripts and see which script is actually better right okay script a hi raj i've heard that you want to join the talent competition i think i have an idea to suggest for you to performance i think you should try to choose to do the singing because i think your voice is good and that performance can make people happy that performance also can make you have a confidence about your talent. What you can learn from joining the, this competition is you can make people love with your talent. All right, as for script B, Dear Raj, congratulations on your decisions. I believe that you are very talented and composing your own songs. Additionally, you have always loved to dance. Why don't you dance to your own song on stage? This is the most suitable idea for you because it combines both your talent. The audience will be flabbergasted knowing that you recorded an original song and danced elegantly to it. Apart from that, you will surely learn to improve your skills and increase your confidence. Good luck. Bye. So by looking at this true script, students, which one do you think is better? Obviously, it's script B. So now let us compare. What are the things that we have in script B that actually makes script B better than script A? Okay, let's look at script A first. So these are some of the errors uh, that can be identified from script A. Alright, so first we are going to look at uh, based on how much script A is able to fulfill the criteria for all the assessment scale uh, in the assessment scale of C, C, A, O and L. 
Okay, let's look at the content first. Let's see if this candidate, this student is able to identify, is able to fulfill all the three tasks that we have identified earlier. Okay, so we have C1 here where he suggested uh, Raj to do singing. Okay, and why is that he suggested Raj to do singing? Is because he thinks Raj has a good voice. Okay, that's our C2. Alright, but we actually felt to identify C3. Okay, which is what he's able to learn if he joined this competition. If we can see the last sentence, it says that what you can learn from joining this competition is you can make people love your talent. If you, by making people love your talent doesn't mean that Raj is able to learn from that. So, he is not answering the third task. Alright, so we can see that target reader is on the whole all informed. We have C1 there, we have C2 there, but C3 is missing. Okay. So it's not all answered. Task is not all fulfilled. All right. The next thing, uh, we look at the CA first. Okay. It communicates simple ideas in simple ways. The sentences used are very straightforward. It says that because I think your voice is good, the performance make people happy. So it's very straightforward ideas. Very very simple ideas. Okay. Then we look at the organization where we are where we are going to look at the cohesive devices. So we can see the cohesive devices that we are able to identify in this text is uh, connectors, simple connectors such as because and and. All right? These are all very basic and high frequency connectors. But cohesive devices, for example, like besides that, apart from that, it is not seen in this text. So for as for the language part, okay, it is mostly simple grammatical sentences simple simple sentences which is used with some degree of control because we are still be we are still able to identify a lot of errors in this text okay next we are going to look at script b okay script b let's see if he answers all the three tasks First, why don't you dance to your own song on stage? So, he suggested Raj to actually dance to his own song. So, that is C1. There's a suggestion of uh, what kind of performance he can do. It combined both your talents. Okay, why is it that he suggested him to do so? Because by doing so, by doing this kind of performance, he's able to combine both of his talent in dancing and also in song composing. Right? That's, her, that's his reason. And the last one, what is Raj able to learn if he did this performance? Is that he's able to improve his skills and also increase his confidence. So that is C3. So C1, C2, C3, O3 is present. So we can say that all the questions are answered. So it, this ta the target reader is fully informed. Okay. As for the CA, we can see that the, the student actually write in a very friendly, friendly tone by starting off with congratulations on your decision. We can see the use of exclamation mark. We can see the use of question marks. And the sentences are delivering straightforward ideas. So the convention in this task uh, of an email is used and it is written in a friendly tone. So CA is a chief. And we look at, let's look at the organization. Organization, obviously we do, we are able to identify some cohesive devices such as additionally, apart from that. Okay, so other there are also other connectors, simple connectors such as because that and and that is used in this writing. All right. As for language, most of it is basic vocabulary. We can see basic vocabularies like songs, dance, stage, etc. They are used appropriately. And we can also see better vocabulary, such as uh, the word composing, instead of uh, using the word like writing a song or uh, Words like flabbergasted, words like um, his dancing 
dance elegantly. So these are some better vocabularies that we're able to identify in this script. Okay, so the simple grammatical forms which is used in a script are also used with a good degree of control. Okay, so with all the assessments, uh, the scales that we look at here and the task fulfillment is there. So we, it is very sure, we are very sure that script B is a better script compared to script A. Alright, okay, so now let's look at some other tips that we have for part 1. Alright, so the suggestion is that please do not spend more than 20 minutes to complete part 1 because part 1 you're only required to write 80 words. So it will be a waste of time if you write a 150 word email or a 120 words email because you will be needing more time for your part 2 and part 3 which requires you to write longer essays. Okay, and answer only what is needed. You do not need long elaboration for part one. So save time on that and do not waste your time counting the number of words. So you can just estimate the length of your email to see if it's more or less reaching 80 words. Then you can just stop there. Okay, that is for part one. Now let's move on to part two. Part two is guided writing, all right, which is a formal essay. Right, different from part one, part one is informal, part two is a formal writing. Okay, same thing, okay, the same drill. We're going to look at the assessment scale for part two. How do we achieve band five for part two? And also we are going to analyze the question. We are looking we are going to look at one sample question and pack the question and identify the task. And also then we are going to compare two different scripts between a good piece of writing and a weak piece of writing and also some other useful tips that we have for part two. Okay, the assessment scale uh, is the same. For part one and part two, we are looking at the same component, which is content, communicative achievement, language, and organization. However, the criteria to achieve band five would be different be because uh, for us, for students, you are expected to achieve a B1 level for part two. Okay, so let's look at some differences between the part one and the part two assessment scale. For content, it's all the same. Okay, it's just task fulfillment if, to see if your content is relevant and to see if the target reader is fully informed. As for communicative achievement, all right, to, in order to achieve band 5 for part 2, you need to be able to hold the target reader's attention. Okay? And then to communicate straightforward ideas appropriately. So holding the target reader's attention, which is something that we don't have just now in our part 1. For organization, text needs to be generally well organized. And you need to use a variety of cohesive devices if you want to achieve band 5. Unlike part 1, where you only need to use a limited number of cohesive devices. But in order to achieve band, band 5 for part 2, you need a variety of them. For language, uh, we need a range of everyday vocabulary and some occasional inappropriate use of less common lexis. Less common lexis are less common vocabulary that we don't use it uh, every day. Okay? And simple and some complex grammatical forms with good degree of control. So what we need here is you need to be able to use some complex sentences in your part two and errors do not impede communication. So these are some of the criteria that you need to achieve if you want to get band five for your part two. All right, let's look at a sample of a questions that we have here. Uh, question two, your school has been discussing events for the upcoming Teacher's Day. Write your essay on one event that can be held on Teacher's Day. In your essay, write about an event that can be held, reasons for your choice, what the outcome would be like. So write your essay using all of the notes. So the same checklist. First, we need to read the question first and we understand the question. Right? After that, we highlight the keywords. Let's look at the keywords. Okay, so first, we're going to talk about Teacher's Day. That's our main focus in this essay. And you need to suggest one event that we can do during Teacher's Day. Okay, so tick, read and understand the question. Tick, highlight the keywords. 
Next, we have, the, we have to identify the three tasks. Usually, it's quite straightforward because the three tasks will be the three bullets that is shown in your question two. Okay? So, the first one is to suggest an event that will be our C1. So, after you have suggested the event, you have to justify why do you pick this event? Why do you suggest this event to be organized? So, what are the reasons? More than one reason that will be our C2. And lastly, what is what the outcome would be like? All right, what is the expected outcome if you organize this event? That will be our C3. So these are the three tasks that we have identified, we underlined, and then we labeled them. Okay, so after unpacking the question, now let's look at these two scripts. Okay, script A. Our class has been discussing about a suitable event for the upcoming Teachers' Day. There are many events that are suitable for Teachers' Day and we'll choose what we think the best one that will give a good outcome. The event that we have chose choose was a fashion show between students and teachers. The participant was opened for all the students and teachers who are interested. For this event, the judge will be a student and teachers that are not participate and the winner will be based on the highest vote. The reason that we choose this event because it was entertaining and fun event that will be enjoyed by all students and teachers. This event also can help to develop self-confidence on, on our ourselves and teach us that fashion is important on our daily lives. The outcome will be great because of entertaining and enjoyment for all the students and teachers. That is why it's a very good event for Teachers Day. All right, script B. Teacher's Day is just around the corner. We should celebrate it as a day for many to remember and as a day of gratitude for our teachers. I have one event in mind. We can have a singing competition. It can be a friendly contest between the teachers and students. We can ask the students and teachers who are good in singing to do a few performances. There should be a minimum of two representatives from the teacher's side and two people representing the teachers. We can have this event as music entertains as well as reduce stress. Hence, the whole school will be immersed in an atmosphere of gaiety. Besides, teachers and students can be evaluated on the same platform. It will be good to have a voting session to pick the winner. Teachers and students can both have fun. Most importantly, it would be a day in foster to foster strong camaraderie. So from script A and script B, which one do you think is better? Yes, okay, script B is better. So let's see why is script B a better script. Okay, we'll look at script F first. Let's analyze script F first. So these are some of the errors that is identified. Okay, let's look at the C for the content. See if all the three uh, tasks has been answered or not. Okay, first one. An event that can be held. So, the student suggested a fashion show. C1. Okay, it's there. The reason for the choice? Because he thinks that uh, it's enjoyable for the students and the teachers. That's his first reason. Uh, let's see. There's another reason stated. Uh, we are able to, the students are able to develop self-confidence. And also, it teaches us uh, fashion is important in our daily life. So, this, this is our second reason. So, there are two reasons there for his choice of event. Okay? But we don't see any outcome uh, from this event. If we look at the last sentence, uh, the outcome will be great because of entertaining and enjoyment. You just state that. The outcome is great, but what kind of outcome that we are expecting from this event, it's not clearly stated. So, we will say that C3 is actually not achieved. So, in this case, for content, there's C1, there's C2, but not C3. Okay? For communicative achievement, if we look at this piece of essay, it's supposed to be formal writing. All right? So, formal language should be used. And let's look at the organization. We see some simple connectors like and, because, 
Okay, a related pronoun that. Another because. Okay. Mm, so we don't really see cohesive devices in this case. Okay, let's look at the comments. So for seek for the content like we have analyzed just now, the target reader is on the whole informed because C3 is missing. The outcome is not clearly stated. For CA, it is unable to hold the target reader's attention. Okay, um, it is just stating what is needed to be stated, but it's not really interesting and holds the target reader's attention. It communicates straightforward ideas. The convention of a formal essay are used reasonably appropriately. That is for communicative achievement. Organization, like we have seen just now, cohesive devices are not seen. And for language, mostly uh, book basic vocabulary are used. Words like font, event, entertaining, they are used appropriately, but we don't really see some very rare vocabulary. And complex grammatical forms are used with some degree of control because there is attempt to use complex grammatical form, but it is not used entirely accurate. Okay, as for script B, let's see if we are able to identify the C1, C2, and C3. So the event that can be held, the event suggested here is a singing competition. Okay, that's our C1. All right. The reason why do we choose a singing competition is because music is able to entertain and it is also able to reduce stress. Okay, that is our first reason of why we pick this singing competition. The second reason is that uh, students and teachers can be evaluated on the same platform. So it's like a, a, a fair thing to be, to be done. All right. So that's our second reason. Uh, how about the outcome? Okay, the outcome is we're able to foster strong camaraderie. All right. So that will be our C3. So all the three tasks are fulfilled. So content is there. For communicative achievement, unlike script A, script A started off the essay with our class has been disgusting. But as for script B, you can see it started off with a generous statement about Teacher's Day. Teacher's Day is just around, uh, around the corner. So compared, if we compare script A with script B, script B is more formal in this case. All right. Okay, let's look at the organization. Let's identify some coercive devices. We can see therefore there. We have hands, we have besides, we have most importantly. All right, so these are the cohesive devices that we are able to identify. And there are also some simple connectors like and. Okay, and for language, some less common lexis, the word like gratitude, friendly, a friendly contest, immerse, at atmosphere of gaiety, camaraderie. So these are some vocabulary that we can see. Okay, some less common lexis. Okay, let's look at the comments. So for content, based on what we have analyzed just now, the target reader is fully informed because the tasks are all fulfilled. As for CA, communicative achievement, the, this piece of essay is able to hold the target reader's attention and it communicates straightforward ideas appropriately. It's accurate. For organization, like we've seen just now, we are able to identify a variety of cohesive devices that is used. It is not repeated. The the student do not repeatedly use the same cohesive devices. There's a variety of it. And as for L, we do see some less common lexis, words like immerse, and we do see some complex grammatical forms, some complex sentences uh, that we're able to see. Okay, for example, in a second in a second paragraph it says, we can ask the students and teachers who are good in singing to do a few performances. So that is an example of a complex sentence that is used accurately. All right, what are the other tips that we have for part two? Okay, similar things to part one. Part two, please do not spend more than 30 minutes to complete part two because you definitely need more time for your part three, okay? Which means we will spend around 40 minutes for your part three. Okay, the content points, unlike part one, it should be longer. Okay, so it should be followed by elaborations to justify uh, your reasons, to justify your to justify your idea. Okay, and the same thing, do not waste time on counting the number of words. All right, so that is for part one and part two. So I'll pass the following session to Madam Adeline. 
for part three. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. We're now going to uh, part three writing. Uh, like what Madam Chong has said just now, she has gone through a lot of the tips okay, for writing. For part three, it's actually a continuation of part one and two. Okay, so how is your work graded for part three? Okay, we are going to look at review, article, uh, report and story. Okay, so for part three, as we see, it's still the same. Content, communicative achievement, organisation and language. Except for now, uh, content is still similar to part one and two. Whatever you write, as long as the task is fulfilled, you will get full marks for content. However, for communicative achievement, organisation and language, now it's stricter. As you can see, for communicative achievement, in order to score well, you, you need to use the appropriate genre and register, which is actually the conventions of the communicative task, huh? effectively to keep readers' attention and communicate with ease. For organisation, for this part, you need to use a variety of cohesive devices with generally good effect. Okay, so for this part, linking words like and, because, is not enough for you to score, uh, score well. Huh? Okay? For language, uses a range of vocabulary including less common lexis appropriately. Okay, for this part, you also need to use simple and complex grammatical forms with control and flexibility. Okay, so here for part three, the less common lexis, uh, like what Madam Chong has said, is just not your everyday language. That is not enough for you to score uh, a five uh, for language. Of course, we still accept occasional errors and slips. Right, so I'm now going to show you okay, a sample question for a review. You recently saw this notice in your English Club Bulletin. We are interested to know what you have watched recently. State the name of the film and tell us about the film. What is your opinion? What in your opinion is a memorable scene in the film? Would you recommend this film to your classmates? Why? Send us your review. And the best review will be published in our next issue of the English Club Bulletin. Okay, if you look at this, you might see that it sounds familiar because it is actually improvised or adapted from your textbook, uh, Full Blast textbook form 4. Okay, let's have a look. Alright, so when you're writing a film, you can choose what is actually common now. Okay, so I have chosen Spider-Man and Barbie. Okay, so you can also choose one of it. And for a review, you need to write in the present simple. Okay, don't reveal the ending and then use adjectives to make it more interesting. Okay, you, for your comments or opinion, you are allowed to use present simple or past simple. Okay, most of us here are students of different uh, a bit, uh, capability of writing. Okay, so if you think that English is not your strong language, probably you would want to choose something simpler. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, before writing, okay, there are certain things that you need to remember to put into your introduction. First, it would be the type of film, okay, whether it's romantic, adventure, animated, horror or comedy. Okay, then, who the leading actors and actresses are, the role of is played by and who, is, uh, who was directing the film. Okay, all these, if you look at your full blast textbook, is available in the plan. Okay, and for the body, okay, so this part I've taken as well from the full blast textbook. Okay, a brief summary using the present simple and also comments on what you liked or didn't like about the film. Okay, so that would be the body of your film review and your conclusion, your opinion of the movie. 
would you recommend it to others? So most students, as far as I know, for review, they would like to just memorize a text. So what would make it different? What would make your review uh, more outstanding than the next person? Would be your opinion. We want to hear your voice. Okay? We want to know what you think about it. It's a classic box office hit. I was disappointed. Why were you disappointed? It's unlike anything I've seen before. Or do you think that, okay, Barbie, it's not suitable for both adults and children, not worth watching, wasting your money, or definitely would recommend it to my classmates. Okay, so this conclusion, okay, part is also taken from your textbook. What I'm actually trying to tell you is that most of the tips you can get are actually from the textbook. Alright, so one of the techniques that you can use if you do not have any other materials is to improvise from the text in the textbook. Okay, what I've done here is that okay, this text from the textbook is Ola Bola. As we can see, I've taken uh, paragraph one from the sample essay of Ola Bola. The one in red, okay, Ola Bola is a Malaysian film directed by Chiu Kang Guan. It's a sports film which stars J.C. Chi as Chao Kwok Kiong, the captain of the national football team of Malaysia. Okay, so if you want to write about Barbie, all you need to do is you replace the name of the film, okay, the genre of the film, and then the characters, the actors and the actresses. There you have one paragraph of your own. And this is a well-written one because you have kept the structure from the textbook. Okay, this one I'm very sure it's very small. Okay, I don't expect you to read. I'm just telling you that some of you are more ambitious. You can always improvise from an online review. Okay, what is uh, good about this is that uh, the person has actually uh, written the review well, okay, with adjectives, as you can see, and a lot of less common lexis. So if you think the textbook is too easy for you, why not improvise from an online review? Okay, all these are ideas or techniques which you can do before the exam. Okay, or some of you would like a more formal way of writing, you can improvise from Wikipedia or even AI now. Okay, what in your opinion is a memorable scene in the film? Okay, so this is just an example. Do you guys ever think about dying? This question brings a small pause to the dance, the night party, and everyone around her also gets stopped due to the sheer shock of such a loaded question. Okay, so you can actually take out a scene from the movie that you have watched and write, this scene is memorable to me because despite being a doll, Barbie does have human qualities and like us, undeniably at times we do think about this. Okay, so we want to hear your voice. Even if you have not watched the whole film, at least watch clips so that you are able to write something memorable or a lesson that you can learn from the movie okay, or film. Okay, so that's all for film review. Look at your textbook full blast to get an, a good example. Okay, the second one that we can see here is an article. You recently saw this notice in your school website. Okay, music lovers, read this, share your thoughts with your fellow schoolmates on the following questions. What music do you listen to cheer you up? Rock, jazz, or something else? Why do you enjoy listening to that? Explain how the type of music you like can cheer you up. We will publish the best article on our website. Write your article. Okay, so you have a choice every year. Out of four questions, three would appear. Okay, so article is something that most students can do. Number one, remember to use the present simple and write the title, right? State your preference on the type of music you prefer. So that should be in paragraph one. What do you like? Do you like rock? Do you like jazz? What do you think can cheer you up? Okay, explain your reasons using a new topic for each paragraph. Then explain how this type of music can cheer you up. 
then you end your article by stating your preference again in an amusing or interesting way. So the better you can write, the more amusing, more interesting it is later would be uh, the would determine your score at the end. Alright, so the first part, would you rather listen to rock or something or jazz, sorry, would you like to listen to rock or jazz or something else to cheer you up? Personally, I prefer rock music. Okay, so you see there, listening to rock music instills hope and confidence and brings about a euphoric feeling. So the word euphoric there actually means happy. Okay, but we want a more precise word because we want to score in terms of vocab. When I listen to rock, I can get up and dance, but I cannot do that with jazz. When I listen to jazz, it relaxes my body and calms me down. However, it is not the type of music to cheer me up. So you can actually compare and contrast okay, and use that technique as a way to explain your reasons. And the second one, explain how it can cheer you up. Medical studies have shown that rock music can help reduce stress, increase positive emotions and even regulate mood. Moreover, rock music can act as an effective tool in stress management by increasing the production rate of dopamine, effectively reducing levels of stress hormones. When I listen to rock, there will be a secretion of dopamine in my brain and that makes me happy. Dopamine is known as the feel-good hormone. So you have elaborated and explained to your readers why it cheers you up. Okay, then you can go on later to give more examples as you need to write 200 to 250 words. So your ending, so if you need cheering up, I totally suggest rock music. Do give it a try. Okay, so this is just a sample of how you can plan your writing. You probably cannot uh, predict all the questions that can come out in the exam, but you can prepare on the plan, on how you would like to plan your article. Right? Then we go to the third one, that is a report. Okay? For report, usually students are not very keen on writing. Okay, but actually, report is not that difficult if we look at the sample from the textbook. Recently, the environment club in your school organized a community service, Gotong Royong Madani. As the secretary, you have been asked to write a report to your principal about the community service. In your report, you must okay, look at the points there because it is very important that you answer all the tasks to get full marks for content. Share the details of what your team did that was successful. Okay, I'm sure you all know that the picture there is actually taken from the textbook. Eh? Okay, the new experiences learned there and give reasons why the government should organize more of such programs. Write your report. Okay, for report writing, Okay, you need to give it a title and the purpose, aim and objective should be in the introduction. Okay, if the report is for a program that has been conducted, use the past simple. If it is a suggestion or recommendation, then use the present simple. Okay, these notes, these are not only tips, huh, but this is what you actually need to remember before writing your report. Okay, and different heading, headings for different paragraphs. Tone is formal. You cannot write to your principal like how you write to your best friend. Okay, use cohesive devices when necessary. For it to sound formal, use the passive voice and no contractions. Huh? Okay, for a sample, you can look at download page 92 or full blast form 4. There are samples there that you can look at, especially the plan. Alright, here we have a report on Gotong Royong Madani in SMK Mawar. Look at the introduction. Okay, so the aim of this report is to share details of what made the program successful, the experiences gained and the reasons why the government should have more of such programs. Actually, what I've done is that I have actually written the content part from uh, the question. I've actually summarised the tasks 
in the introduction. Alright, so the program details, okay, this is the part where you can write about what, is ha what has happened in your school. All Form 3 and 4 students were asked to participate in the Gotong Royong Madani, a community service program in our school last Saturday. The program began with a briefing at 8 a.m. and we were divided into groups. Some of us cleaned the drains, others picked up litter and put up signboards of do not litter around the school. What made this program successful was that all the attendees were punctual and the work was carried out without delay. Okay, so you actually have actually answered one of the tasks, uh, one of the points. At the end of the program, we were served with a hearty lunch prepared by some of the parents who volunteered. Okay, so as what I said just now, it's a mixture of passive and active sentences. So you have actually also manage to use a variety of sentence structure. Okay, I learned that if we work as a team, we can make the school clean and tidy in a short time. Besides sharing the burden of cleaning up the area, all of us managed to meet a new friend. Okay, and the reasons for organizing such programs, I think the government should organize more of such programs as it brings people together to achieve what is impossible to do alone. Furthermore, it allows parents, students and teachers to mingle around and foster a better relationship. Okay, so you can give more reasons on why we should have Gotong Royong. Okay, I'm sure you learn about this Gotong Royong not only from your English textbook. Okay, so in conclusion, all in all, this program was a success and I hope more such programs can be organised in the future. Okay, so this is just a sample. Of course, this is not the whole essay of Gotong Royong, okay, but you can use part of this in your answer. As for story, okay, story is what students most, most of the time would not want to choose. Okay, but I can actually tell you that storytelling or story writing most probably would come out every year. Okay? So your teacher has asked you to write a story for your school magazine. The story must begin with the following words. Your story must include, okay, usually a, t a few words given. It was the long holidays for Jamie, a college student. What happened on the trip? How the trip changed Jamie's impression of going on a trip? Okay, usually for storytelling, what my students usually tell me is that, teacher, we don't have the vocab. We don't have the idea of writing. So what I've asked them to do usually is to write a draft. Okay, let's look. Okay. What makes a good story? Write what you say or think. Use more show words than tell words. What do you mean by that? Okay, later we will have a look. Use impressive and precise vocabulary. Use verbs, adjectives and adverbs to make the story interesting. You can refer to your textbook, download form 5, page 26. Okay, so what happens is, give your story a title, okay, copy down the 10 words given, do not change uh, the words because that is actually content point number one. Okay, so the 10 words is given. It was the long holidays for Jamie, a college student. Okay, usually uh, for most, most of my students, they will just write in Kuching. Okay, so what you can do is after writing the draft, is to make that draft longer. Who decided to travel to the UK? Okay, now we have managed to write a complex sentence in sentence number one. Okay, and for this, Okay, so probably in your mind, you want to write about a student who has no money, which is very common among college students. Huh? Okay. Sorry. Okay, so like so many students, he did not have much money because his scholarship was only just enough to live on. Okay, what I have done here is that I've put in the word because so that now you have a cohesive device and your sentence is again a complex sentence. Okay, writing requires planning. Okay, the first part is your draft. 
you have to write it down first if you are writing a story then you plan how you want to write your sentence so that you will have not that many errors okay so you look response a and response b is pretty different now okay last year he decided to go to manchester to visit some friends he decided to hitchhike hitchhike here means you stand at the side of the road and you try to stop cars or any kind of transport okay for a free lift so we see the word even last year you can put in some uh, explanation to go during the autumn term he decided to go to visit some friends. How long? For the weekend. But, okay, so then a compound sentence. He could not afford a train ticket and even the coach was too expensive. So he had to hitchhike to Manchester. He got a bus to the motorway. Okay, I mentioned just now one of the techniques is that you need to use more precise vocabulary. So God, uh, we classify everything. It's definitely not uh, an uncommon lexis. Uh, okay? So we want something like, he caught the bus to the beginning of the motorway and it was cold and wet. Okay, so this is what we call uh, a tail word. Okay, so we want you to be able to imagine. So we have what we call a show word. It was a cold, windy and November day and while he was waiting, he got soaked to the skin. So you can imagine if you got soaked to the skin, how it feels. So this is actually a show word. So if you are able to write like this, you would be able to score better. Okay? After waiting for two hours, he got a lift from a lorry driver who was going to Manchester. Okay, after waiting for two hours, we can use the word, you can use words like finally got a lift from a lorry driver who was in fact going all the way to Manchester. This is after writing your draft. You think of all the techniques where you want to place in the words to show that you are able to do so. Okay? don't have to draw the picture okay so he felt pleased please is also okay a common word jamie felt extremely relieved the word extremely there is an adverb to show that the degree of how he felt huh? okay relieved the lorry driver was a nice man and they talked a lot okay we would i told my students do not use the word nice because nice means a lot. Nice can just mean nice. Okay? If somebody tells you nice, it's usually because they don't have anything to say about it. So here, the lorry driver seemed a friendly fellow of a, around 35, reasonably well-dressed, and he and Jamie talked a lot. Okay? Then a police car overtook them and made them stop and they had to go to the police station. Okay, overtook. Usually, what does a police car do? Okay, suddenly, as they were driving along the motorway, a police car raced past them and made them stop. Okay, the word suddenly. I notice my students like to use the word suddenly. Okay, but for this one, you can use suddenly. Because while you are driving, you don't expect a police to suddenly race past you and ask you to stop. What does that mean? Okay, so in storytelling, you have to create a climax of the story. Okay, so you will see something must have happened if a police car stops you. The police thought the lorry was carrying stolen goods. The word thought is once again a common word. So usually in crime stories, we want to see this word. They were taken to the police station because the police suspected that the lorry was carrying stolen goods. So the word police and suspect often go together. Okay? A policeman asked Jamie a lot of questions and Jamie spent the night in the police station. 
So for policemen, if you can use the word detective, you probably will get higher marks, okay? Not only just policemen, a detective interrogated Jamie for two hours and he even had to spend the night in a cell. Okay, so this is British English, so whereby you use the word cell. For I think for uh, Americans, they will use lock up, uh, okay? He was released the next day. Okay, so the word eventually released the next day. Eventually there. Okay. Hitchhiking is dangerous. Okay. The lorry was carrying stolen television sets. See the word apparently? Because there's nothing that I uh, can think of to make that sentence better. I will just add in apparently. Jamie said he would not hitchhike again. Like I mentioned just now, try not to use the said word. Huh? Okay. Jamie swore that he would never hitchhike again as it was risky. So I have combined these two sentences together. Okay, and that's the end for part three. Thank you. Alright, Assalamualaikum. Uh, welcome back to our session today, which is uh, writing paper two. I am the moderator for today. I'm Miss Noliana, and here is Madam Adeline. Okay, so we have asked you to uh, leave your questions in the chat box, but we are we indeed we're having like a uh, high festivity in there. Everybody saying hi. So, Madam Adeline, hi. <laughs> Okay, no questions. So I think um, actually the, the session is very clear itself, but we will compile a few questions ourselves, which is frequently asked questions. And most of these questions are from students, uh, our own students, uh, other schools, uh, students participant, form four students, uh, SPM candidates as well. So first question will be, Madam, uh, this, this question is from a Form 4 student, okay? Will I be penalised if I write less than the required number of words? Uh, okay, I think this is actually a very frequently asked question. Yes. Okay, so we know that for part one, you only need to write 80 words. Mm -hmm. However, if you have only written, say that you have written 75 words, that's fine. Okay, nothing much will happen to you. However, if you have only written 10 words, obviously this will affect your language marks okay because then you would have not met the minimum require requirements to be awarded a higher language mark that's not enough language for us to give you a better grade in other words okay so i think 80 words 250 words you it's manageable for students sitting for sbm all right what do you think okay so what if they write more than the required <clears throat> okay, if you write more, okay, you might self penalize number one, you might make more errors. Okay, number two, you might take up too much time. Okay, but if you are, you are very confident that you can write well and you want to write more, no one is stopping you. But do keep to the time. Huh? Okay, like what Madam Chong did mention in the beginning, you need more time for part three as compared to part one and part two. All right, okay. So basically everyone needs to... Uh, make sure you adapt to the time limit okay it's not just about the number of words all right so next is what is the minimum and maximum number of paragraphs in writing for part one two and three okay for part one email okay you actually can write everything in one pa paragraph you will not be penalized that is only for part one okay for part two and three 
we expect you to write at least three paragraphs because you want your essay to at least have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Okay, can you write more than three paragraphs, of course? Okay, look at the question. Okay, some students would like to write a paragraph each for a subheading, or if it is a story, okay, the next day he would might want to begin it uh, in another paragraph. So that is encouraged. All right. Okay, so I just uh, read the chat here. Someone says, can you speak louder, please? We cannot hear you clearly. Uh, I hope you can hear us clearly. Okay. Um, so the next question, will I lose marks if I didn't follow the format required? Okay, if you have uh, actually followed what we have said, okay, for communicative achievement, okay, Okay, let me look at it a while. Uh. For communicative achievement, for part two and part three. Okay, uh, just now Madam Chong mentioned, for part one email, it is informal. Okay, so there's practically not any format that you need to follow. However, for part two, for formal essay, okay, you need to write formally, meaning that no contractions are allowed. For part three, Three, okay, under communicative achievement, if you do not uh, write according to format, okay, you will not get full marks for communicative achievement. Basically, that's it. Okay, if your report looks like a review, definitely you will not get five marks for that particular report. All right, thank you, madam. Okay, uh, I hope Mello, if you can hear us clearly, you can leave a comment on the, in the chat. Yeah. All right, um, next question for Madam. I think this is one of the, the famous questions asked from uh, our students. Eh? What can I do if I'm bad or I'm poor in vocabulary? I think if you had followed uh, these sessions, I think even yesterday, right? Yes, uh, for reading. You, yeah. Uh, yeah. you have to start reading, you have to start planning, Okay, so look at your textbook. There are a lot of tips there. Follow the plan, especially for writing. Okay, make sure that you plan what you want to write. Okay, look at the, I'm sure your teachers have given you tips as well. Okay, use them, practice until you, you are able to write well. It's oh. never too late. We only become better. Yes, we still have time. Eh? All right, okay, for this question, um, it's regarding spelling. Okay, so we know that we, we, we are using British uh, English, eh? but what if students use American spelling instead? Will they be penalized? Okay, so um, actually we are all encouraged to use the British spelling. Like for example, color, it should be C-O-L-O-U-R. Mm -hmm. However, if a student uses the word, uh, uses American spelling, C-O-L-O-R throughout, consistently, you will not be penalized. We will only start penalizing you if you mix them. Meaning part of it is in American spelling, the other half is in British spelling, then it will affect your marks. Okay? However, don't worry so much, spelling is actually a minor error. Do uh, make sure that you check your tenses. I think that is more important. All right. Okay, so that's the end of the question. If we have more questions in the chat, um, maybe if anyone has questions, you can leave it there. But if we don't, uh, last, I would like to ask you, Madam, since we have, I think, approximately like one month uh, till SBM, mm -hmm. is there any like what advice or tips to give students for English especially? I would say you just have to start reading, writing, practice, okay, do your revision consistently, plan. Okay, if you think that you would like to write a review in the exam, then start planning. Okay, practice one set or so. It's not so much of memorizing, but plan your essay, what you want to do during the exam. And then pray hard. It comes up in the exam. All right? All right. Okay, all the you. very best. Okay, thank you, Madam Adeline. Okay, that's the end for our session today. We would like to wish all SPM candidates uh, very good luck. 
and may let's pray for easy questions for us huh? this year <laughs> all right thank you so much from all of us thank you